It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul and Mary Jo are here despite the snow. And they're <laughs> a little bit of snow. And they're going to talk about the latest from uh, the Microsoft band. Paul has his review. Uh, new Office and Surface updates. Windows Phone. We'll even talk Xbox One. It's all coming up next with Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley, episode 387, recorded November 5th, 2014. Pint Curls. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. Now introducing Squarespace 7 with even better site management tools and other improvements. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code Windows. And by audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash windows. And by Carbonite. Whether you have one computer at home or several at your small business, Carbonite backs up your files to the cloud automatically and continually. Plus, access your files anytime, anywhere with a free app. Start your free trial at Carbonite.com. No credit card required. Use offer code WINDOWS and you'll get two bonus months with purchase. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover Microsoft and all its various ploys to become the number one monopoly in all the world. The evil genius wow. of Microsoft. Ladies and gentlemen. Is this like a flashback show from the 1990s? <laughs> I was like, wait, isn't that the Google show? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the other show. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think what you was got I your, thinking? Uh, mixed up <laughs> I have the wrong show. Paul <laughs> Therod is here from the uh, super site for Windows, winsupersite.com. Mary Jo Foley from ZDNet, all about Microsoft.com, the premier Windows and Microsoft journalists in the world. Hello, folks. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Met with silence yeah. as we contemplate well, What are you that supposed little... to do? Say, yes, yes, we are. Yeah. Uh, pretty much. You're humble. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Ish. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, uh, I, okay, I'm, I, we're not going to go into this in great detail, but, you know, a lot of people watching CNN last night for their election coverage. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I guess CNN has a deal like the NFL with the... Uh, Microsoft folks for the well, Leo, surface. it's identical to the NFL because <laughs> there's iPads <laughs> hidden yeah. behind the surfaces. Yeah. <laughs> Whoopsies. Alyssa, but you know, somebody made the comment on Twitter that if Microsoft, uh, you know, sh should market the Surface Pro 3 as a an iPad stand, you know, and that if um, they sold one of those as a stand for every iPad, I mean, they would have a pretty reasonable market share. <laughs> <laughs> we, it's pretty funny, uh, but uh, you know you can't. You really can't tell commentators when they come in. Oh, you can't use your computer because. Oh, I'm not thinking you can tell that woman anything that would change yeah. her mind about anything. Yeah. So, you know, shocker, yeah. shocker. So, although uh, I, I do, I do see Robert McClaws, who's a friend of ours on Twitter, um, asked Jake Tep Tapper. Is that yeah, one of the guys? Tepper, yeah. Uh, you said, well, hey, why, why are you using an iPad? And he said, you know what? We were just tweeting from our iPads. Ah, that's all they're that's, good for. That's all they're good for, yeah. guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, the queen it, of England, when she did her first tweet, was ostensibly from an iPad. But oddly enough, and we're not sure how this happened, the tweet came out as from an iPhone. Well, she's tiny. It probably looked like an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of shenanigans going on, but that's not what we're here to discuss. <laughs> uh, we are here to discuss all the wonderful things of the, the new Microsoft shackle, as Paul calls it. <laughs> the manacle. The manacle. <laughs> uh, you know, we had a review. Uh, Daniel Rubino came on from, uh, by the way, WP mm -hmm. Central is now Windows Central. Yep. Yep. And uh, Daniel is editor-in-chief there. He's been on this show. Love the guy. And he uh, did his review of the Microsoft band. And he said he loved it. And his girlfriend, yeah. who's tiny, even loved it. Okay. I don't know <laughs> well, <laughs> how that's relevant. Yeah, but, but, well, um, because it is kind of clunky, maybe. Oh, it is. Yeah, that's true. Daniel's a little too excited about the Microsoft band. I, I appreciate his enthusiasm. But um, the truth is, in its current state, that this thing is... Uh, 
is ridiculous. I mean, it's it's too much in every sense of the word. It's not just too big and heavy and whatever. It's too complex. It does too much. It's impossible to figure out. Uh, it's impossible to know when it will automatically do stuff and when it will. It requires you to trigger something to happen. You know, yeah. um, it 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 suffers. It, it's I don't know if I wrote this in the. I didn't write. I guess I, I've been writing it my big, bulky, uncomfortable, and complex. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> it's something that was designed by engineers. It does everything. It's kind of a typical Microsoft it product. Is, yeah. It's like this yeah. gigantic do-it-all monstrosity right. that shoots fireworks and you know whatever. But you know they kind of miss some of the basics. I mean, for example, you can have the screen be off. In fact, I think did the mind just die? Okay, no, it's okay. So you can have the screen be off. Or you can have a, a like a clock that's on, but not anything other than a clock. Like I can't leave it on like heart rate. It has to be on clock, you know. Um, but it doesn't have the notion of a like an at a glance mode where you bring your wrist up to your face like you would be if you, you know, looked at a clock or a watch. And um, well, not that's only really does important. Microsoft, uh, most of these watches well, do at least do that. Samsung does it. Um, Everybody Microsoft does that. invented the notion of at a glance mm. with Windows Phone. How did they not get that into the right. band? You know, so there's, there's things like that that um, uh, I just don't understand. It, it it measures more than any other fitness band that's available. It's pretty impressive. And that's amazing. It even measures like UV exposure from the sun. Yeah. That's cool. It's cool. But right now it's it, it doesn't matter. It's it's like saying, hey, you know, did you you know your car could, you know, go off road and everything? It's like, well, that's cool. But I drive to work every day. I don't right. need to go off road. I don't, you know. Right. And by the way, how would I even enable that mode? I have no idea. It's like have some complex. Have you worn any of these other watches for any length of time? Leo, I, <laughs> I have been wearing one of these watches for four years okay. now. Like I, okay. I've owned two Nike Fuel Bands, two Fitbits. Okay. I have both of the Samsung devices, oh, okay. the band and the watch. Um, I have two on now because I wear a Fitbit <laughs> every single day. And right. now I'm testing the Microsoft thing. And I got to tell you, this is like some gigantic Tesla thing with bristling with sensors and lights and doodads. And the truth is, I don't think most people need this kind of oversight. I think it's a little much. When you look um, at the, um, the the flyaway of all the stuff that's in here, it does look like a really complex device. Just the, the simplest things on this device are really complex. Um, and this, like I said, it's a lot of little things they didn't get right. You know, the, the at-a-glance mode. The, like, why is the display not curved? Why is it this gigantic yeah. thing that I hit on everything every time I move my hand anywhere because it's jutting out all over the place. Right. Like, it's just, you know, I, I I think we lose sight in when people who love technology love technology and they they don't really think of it as a means to an end. To them, it's everything. And so it's like, oh, this is so cool. You know, it's got, oh my God, it's got tiles on it. Oh my God. You know, yeah, that, okay, okay, that's cute. But, you know, can you sleep with with it and not kill yourself if you, you know, push your head into your wrist or whatever? I mean, like, it's it's really obtrusive, complex, and it does it does a lot. It's amazing. It is amazing. It's amazing like the space station is amazing, <laughs> but uh, it's just most of us don't need a space station. I don't know. I just think it's too much. It has a GPS built into it, which is uh, it's one of the yep. few that has its own GPS so that you don't have to take the phone. Well, okay, but given all the smarts that this thing has, I mean, so I'd like to, to be more automatic stuff, you know. I, uh, they're working on this, but it should be able to... It's got, it's got sensors for everything. How about knowing that I'm in sleep <laughs> or about right. to fall asleep? It's, right. And just measure that for but me. They can How about do doing? some of these things with a firmware update, right? Yes, yes. And, and if talk. you're using Windows Phone, you can talk to it, which is cool. Uh, or is lame. Um, you know, you know, depending well, cool on how in, you feel in, about that kind of thing. Thinking so, about it, I mean, what, what, <laughs> does it work? I mean, can you say, hey, take yeah, a note, yeah. Cortana? Well, oh, okay. Those types of features I've actually temporarily disabled because as part of my this thing does, does too much, every single time I get a text message, a an email message, a uh, Facebook update, I think. Facebook, I just think Facebook was one of them. Whatever it was. This thing of you know calendar invites whatever my my wrist will buzz. It's like I was getting electroshock therapy. It's like zzz, 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 oh, that's, zzz, that's quite zzz, all day long. That's I get, quite annoying. I get too much of that. And you stuff. can't, now, but you could turn that off, right? You can turn it off, and so I have. But I, I guess what I'll add though is, this falls into that category of things that make this thing amazing, yeah. because someday, not today, but someday, this thing using machine learning in the cloud 
we'll be able to look at, we'll be able to look across all of these data points that to any other device would be completely disconnected. Well, and would be to this device too. It requires machine learning, and say, hey, we noticed that your heart rate spikes in the 15 minutes before the weekly yes. meeting that you have with your that boss. That would be a good thing to do. So you should have a drink it's, now. You know, <laughs> you should drink some water. No, you should drink some water or do some right. meditation or what. You know, no, that would be really great. You, I think that's, that's really, that would be really great. And that's that thing of the, the but that's science of fiction, Leo. That's a promise. Yeah. It's, it's, I do believe it's possible. I do believe it's going to happen. And I do think this thing's going to get simpler and there'll be a smaller version and all that stuff. It's, I'm not, I'm not saying it's crap. It's not, it's not just don't like buy this it lackluster now. entry. It's, it's almost too much. It's like, right. um, you know, tired of being made fun of by everybody. Microsoft kind of like just shot for the moon and we can do this uh, and the load up. <laughs> you know, Somebody, like I think it was Steve Gibson pointed out that we are really in the, you know, the Palm pilot era of this stuff and that so this everybody is going to be trying things and learning from that uh, it's probably would be foolish to buy one unless you're an avid you know technology buff and you understand yeah. you're going to be on the or an edge. avid uh, extreme workout kind of person or whatever um but then you should get I, the fitbit or something in fact those new fitbits maybe. look great I, the fitbit does what i want um at least you know outside of myself to realize that what i want isn't what everyone wants i mean i sort of look at this right hopefully fairly holistically or whatever. But, you know, I, I think I, one of the things I really like about it is the constant heart rate monitoring. I think that's cool. Um, you know, my Fitbit already does sleep monitoring and it's no more sophisticated on the Microsoft band than it is on Fitbit. You right. still have to turn it on, you, you know, manually. On. Although, by the way, they, Daniel when you're said falling they, asleep at night. Hmm? Daniel did say they plan to make that automated. At some point, I plan to have a flying car, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I'm I'm sure that will happen. I'm you know they told me the same thing, but I don't. It doesn't matter what it's going to do. It matter what matters yeah. is what it does do. Right. And you know it's weird. It does too much in some areas, and it does too little in other areas. And it's you know it's it's not a half-hearted look. We copied everyone else kind of thing. It really is a moonshot, and I give them a lot of credit for that. Yeah. Um, you know. But, you know what uh, I think know, is. Uh, part part of why it feels so disconnected in terms of what it can do and what it's supposed to do is if you look at what it is, it comes from two different, totally, two totally different parts of Microsoft, right? Mm. Xbox team is the one that designed this. That's who, <laughs> that's who designed the band. Really? Yes. I didn't know that. That's what I've heard. And then the team that did all the back end, the health stuff, the sensors, the machine learning, that's... Azure and the cloud and the database right. team, right? So you wonder, like, did these guys actually ha have much of a conversation before they said, hey, let's stick these two things together and turn it into an yeah. Internet of Things device, right? Yeah. Well, uh, you, Mary, actually, Mary Jo will know. I, I just asked what? her the other day. I said, there's a there's a mobile app for this on every major platform and, and Windows Phone. No, I'm sorry. So, and, uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and Windows Phone. Um, oh. But it's, I know, I know. Um, and it, it, it uh, there's an underlying Microsoft Health service, which is that mach you know Windows Azure or sorry Azure machine learning kind of thing that's kind of going to happen in the back end. Um, which you know is sort of like all those data center you know virtual machine things that they built for Xbox Live. It's like this you just got to take our word first. We have this thing. We're never going to show it to you, but you know it's out there somewhere. Um, but okay, but is there a mic like if I go to Microsoft.com/health? or Microsoft.com slash Microsoft-health. Um, where is the web version of this thing? Where is it? Turns out, I found out, Mary Jo. It doesn't exist. Oh, you did? There's no it's web. Coming out. There's no, wow. Uh... There will be. It's coming out next year. Oh. And so when people say that this thing was kind of rushed to market, I sort of say, yeah, in some ways it kind of was. I mean, not because, you know, Apple just announced something and Android's been doing something and they had to get to market. This thing was coming down the pipeline for a long time, right. but I, I, I do sort of think that the 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 thing they ended up with, which they're selling to real people, is just not quite ready. In some cases, yeah. because it's too much, <laughs> you know, yeah. not because it's, it's too little. It's a true true version one right? Like the old yeah. adage, they need three versions to get something right. Yeah, probably true in this case, right? I mean, yeah. this is real, real early stuff. I bet they're making very limited quantities of this because they know it's not for everybody. Like when I, when I saw this, I had zero interest in this. I'm like, it's big, it's complicated. I don't have a Fitbit now. I, I don't care what my heart is. I don't think you have is. enough room in your apartment for this thing, Mary Jo. I don't. I, I really don't. <laughs> hey, I mean, if you'd it, have if to, like, could, hang your hand out the could, window, you know. If it 
tracked like pint curls, maybe I <laughs> yes. might be right. more interested, but it, like it doesn't do anything that I really care about. Pint so, curls? Is that an actual you know, exercise? Lifting a pint, how many yeah, how many calories <laughs> am I expending and consuming? <laughs> Most of these bands actually really are only good for walking and running. They're just yeah. pedometers, well, you know. Right. Yes, and so so uh, I do weights, I do rowing, and I do treadmill. And the treadmill is the only thing it measures, and it doesn't do that as well as walking because this is something. Uh, having been wearing these things for years, I've noticed a progression. The Nike Fuel Band, when it first started out, really only measured your foot stride, and right. it was good for walking all, or running as well. Right. Um, if you got an elliptical trainer, you might as well have just eaten a piece of pizza yeah. as far as this thing was concerned. Yeah. It didn't have any didn't understanding. And I was putting it on my ankle. and. Yep, it's very <laughs> frustrating. Yeah. Well, that's why some people, wear, you know, they make little um, uh, gadgets that are not, you know, you put in your pocket or put in your shoe. You know, that, that's why. But, you know, as they get more sophisticated, uh, newer versions of the Fitbit, uh, the Fuel Band, which maybe that's going away, and I'm not sure anymore, but uh, Fitbit certainly handles those kinds of situations better. But then you have the thing, well, okay, I'm going to ride my bike around the neighborhood, you know. Um, you kind of need a GPS type thing or yeah. something, you know, some combination of sensors to get an accurate understanding of that's going. And, and frankly, what you really need is um, to say, hey, I'm doing this exercise. Or Well, you can like, do that on hey, a lot of I did. I, right. Any, Health, any, Microsoft uh, Health will do that, let you enter in an exercise. Like it, with a Fitbit, you could say, I just rode a bike for 30 minutes right. at some leisurely speed, and it will say, okay, it was sort of this many. Yeah, but why am uh, I wearing a band then? Thank you. That's yeah. my point. Because <laughs> I right. can do that <laughs> without the band. Let me get this straight. Yeah. This thing yeah. has more sensors on it than an Imperial probe droid from the Empire Strikes Back, <laughs> and you can't tell that I'm asleep? Yeah. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. So I just uh, and you know it doesn't. It also doesn't have some things that you kind of would think it would, like music, yeah. the ability to have music on there. Sure. If you're using it when you're running, wouldn't you want music? I it has know. no memory at all. Like it was, it's some megabytes of uh, storage. It's like nothing on here. Well, you carry your which, phone by the way, may be a problem. For, it might be a problem for apps down the road too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, we, so can I say a couple do, of good things about it? Two hundred bucks. Yeah, say some good. Two hundred bucks. That's, I mean, uh, given truly what, cross platform. Cross platform. The, yeah. which I have a lot say, of these you know, others are not. Can, if you get an Apple Watch, you're in the Apple ecosystem. Yeah. You get Samsung, an Android Wear device, you're in Android. Yeah, Samsung, Samsung, you're yeah. in Samsung. Samsung. Um, um, this thing does not care what you have. That's beautiful. And two day I, I battery life, them. right? Good. Bet my better battery life than you know most. what the battery life sucks. Actually, oh, the battery life is terrible. It's not two days. All right. That's. Two days, it, it's not. And it, it's bitten me because it has now twice died on me when I went to sleep, which I didn't appreciate, so I didn't get an accurate sleep reading. And the, the other day I was using it, maybe yesterday or the day before, and it shut, it, it really buzzed. I looked down and it was like, oh, there's no more battery life. You got to charge me now. And it kind of craps out on you like that with, you know, I, I mean, I'm used to Fitbit. So if my Fitbit goes, mine goes 10 days easily. It's They say yeah. seven to 10, but yeah. Um, hey, this is like one and a half, and I don't know. I just it's version one dot oh, Paul. I know one dot oh. Hmm. I could do with less on the screen and more in the battery. Yeah. Okay. You know? Yeah, we should talk a little bit about what's inside because that's kind of interesting yes. too, right? So, yep. um, there we know the processor is an ARM Cortex M4 microcontroller, but we don't really know what the operating system is when i when i asked them they said there is no operating system it's only firmware and it's called the microsoft wearable architecture whatever that is we've never heard of that before wow. um we don't know if it has a windows 10 core or any part of windows 10 or not um they won't answer that they just said there's going to be an sdk coming sometime next year for it so people can write apps for it but we don't know if that means apps for the phone or apps for the device they aren't really saying we don't know if it's .NET Micro Framework and is going to be moved over to this platform or if it's going to be um, like Windows Embedded or Windows Embedded Compact. We, we just don't know a lot of how this fits in with the rest of the ecosystem right now. You said the Xbox team uh, designed it, but did they do the guts? We don't Not know. Not sure. We probably don't Not know. Not sure. You know, the Xbox team, the hardware part of it is now part of the Microsoft Devices team. That's where Surface is, mm, Xbox. Okay. Anything they make that's hardware okay. is all sitting there. So they would have there. made this. And, you yeah. know, this must have been in development for 
a year. It was. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. If not years, yeah. If not sure. years. Yeah. So. Right. No, and it probably way, I, changed, right, over time what it was going to look like right. and what kind of services it could connect to. Because if you look at what services it's connecting to on the back end, a lot of these didn't even exist just a few months ago. Right. I mean, there's things like, um, I asked them for a whole list. Azure Document DB, which is a NoSQL database. That didn't even exist till a couple months ago. It supports so that? So it connects to all this stuff. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Yep. Azure uh, it, Service it's, Bus, Data Factory, it is, blah, blah, it's, blah. It's truly impressive. I mean, it's it's um, yeah. it's overkill. It's like it's like getting a gaming PC. You know? Or like I, It's like I need a new laptop. And then you get like a $7,000 gaming laptop with like red lit keys. And it's like, <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> You're going to read Facebook and email your mother. Why did yeah. you get this thing? Yeah. yeah. It's a little much. You know. It's impressive, though. It, 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 it is legitimately she, impressive. The, uh, the, the woman doesn't seem impressed, though. And <laughs> she's, well, like, she's on a search. She's probably using an iPad behind that surface. She yeah. Is. yeah, that's She's it. using an iPad, too. I can tell. <laughs> Let me so just ask Siri. It's fine. Do you Why look hot in that watch? No. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the fairest one of all, Siri? So, and so, now some people, maybe women, wear it with the uh, the screen inside, so you can do this yeah. kind of funny thing. Um, how, how did you wear it? See, he's wearing I, it. So I, it's funny. As we were talking, I actually just switched it over again because I keep trying both ways. I, I actually prefer the thing on the outside, although it's awkward. Actually, if you look at my wrist right now, um, you can see like... Oh, so you are wearing it on the inside. Right yeah. now I am. I now you see the band it. and the but, I mean, clasp. It's, so, it's just so awkward. And, and <laughs> you know, in this there position, there used to be you... people. There used to be guys. Oh, they were always a little strange that would wear their wristwatch like that, and they'd look like that. Yeah, and actually, like that, that is easier. It's just weird. It's just, it feels weird to me. Is it scratching a lot? I've read people say it's scratching. Have you ever heard the term scratch tastic? <laughs> no, uh, I have now. Yeah. No. <laughs> What yeah, is scratch tastic? It scratches easily. The easiest uh, scratched product I ever owned was an iPod Nano. Oh, it was when they, those? they plastic switched screen. to the yeah. color. And I, 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 I had it sent to me at a hotel in LA. I was up for a Microsoft event that month or whatever it was. And I, I put it on, down on the um, couch or whatever, took my camera out, took a picture of it, and then flipped it over, and the back was scratched. <laughs> Just couch. from touching the couch. And I was like, you know, oh, Apple. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that was that was an, an early antenna yeah. gate. People they denied it, and then they said, "Ah, eh, well, yeah, it does." Yeah, they yeah, scratch. They, they scratch, scratch really pretty easily. Yeah. Okay, so there you have it. Oh wait, version three yeah. I think I'll. Yeah, yeah, and it, and again, it's, I don't think this is particularly oh, Microsoft's fault. All of these watches leave something to be desired, and it's yeah. still early days. The, the important part here, actually, though, and maybe we should fo focus on this a little bit more, was. Uh, the Microsoft Health service on the back end. I really right. think this is the important thing. This is just one of many devices that Microsoft and other companies will release that interact with Microsoft Health. And uh, it, it's that machine learning piece. And, and if you think about multiple devices, even whether you move from one device to another or even have multiple devices over the course of a, a day or week, whatever, for whatever reason, that different things can feed into it. Um, I could imagine a, a situation where you went to a gym and the machines were hooked up to Microsoft Health, and with your fingerprint, you log into your account. That's how it should be, yeah. You do your exercise, and it goes up to the yeah. cloud, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to I, – I really think the big deal is the the back end, and that's the, yeah. the area where Microsoft arguably um, – well, I think – has the biggest lead yeah. and, the, and the biggest chance to make a difference. Did yours uh, have trouble with daylight saving time, the end of daylight saving time? <laughs> Leo, what, how did I describe this in the notes? An incredible and inexcusable rookie mistake. Oh, dear. What happened? Did it not recognize it? This is what happened when the Zoom came out, remember? Uh-huh. And Apple's but had I this problem, too, by the way. I think that comparison is probably apt. <laughs> but, uh Louise. Uh, no, I love the Zoom, but I mean, you know, the Zoom was what it was, right? I mean... Uh, so what happened? Yeah. Did it just not switch? Yeah, I didn't make the switch. And then what happened is when you uh, make the switch, actually, this, by the way, this problem I have with Fitbits, not that they um, don't handle daylight savings, but if you do a, a, like a time zone change on a Fitbit, you can lose data. Oh. I've had that happen. In fact, when I went uh, either to or from Spain, I did that. In fact, it must have been to Spain because when I got back from Spain, I never changed it for a while because I didn't want to lose any data. But I... Uh, it just six hours of time change. It was like, you know, lost, you know, 
Does it, it lose just that six hours or everything? Uh, it whatever wasn't synced. Got so, it. So yeah, sync it before was, you update. The yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. All right. So when this happened, I read that this was happening, and I just decided not to touch it and let it do its thing. And it doesn't matter because yeah. it was brand new anyway, right? So the the device came out on Friday. Daylight savings time was Sunday night, or I guess Saturday night. I mean, who cares? You know, you lost your first day of data or something. Huh. If you did, yeah, big deal. But <laughs> it's just emblematic, I think, of the rush to market uh, approach here. You know, oh, daylight we, savings oh. time. But really, can you really? imagine daylight savings? Oh, you mean February oh. is twenty nine days? Some years? Damn it! How oh, did we not know? We forgot that. Yeah, <laughs> it's like really, really. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just oh well. Uh, okay. Well, uh, you know what? Everybody has to do their watch. I think you, probably you're going to hear the same kinds of things with the Apple Watch. Although Apple has the benefit of watching everybody else screw up before theirs comes out. But you know what well, Apple So did Microsoft, do. I guess. But, but knowing Apple, though, right? What they tend to do is go after a limited field of features and do them right. doesn't feel yeah. like they're doing that this time, but maybe. Okay, I, don't, I haven't seen it yet. I'm just saying, you know, I, just in general. I mean, we'll see. I, I, people, as I was criticizing Microsoft being on Twitter, people are saying, yeah, but the Apple Watch won't or doesn't do blah, blah, right, blah. And I'm right. like, listen, I'll, I'm happy to criticize that in January or whenever it comes right. out. I'm just saying, today I have this, and this is right. the problem today. Well, it won't have GPS. In fact, that that is, I think, th that's a really, uh, th there's only one other watch, one of the Samsungs has a uh, built-in GPS. That's rare, because that that's a battery killer. You know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think a lot of people or companies making bands are probably relying on you. If you're if you're up for a GPS style event, like a run or I guess a bike you're ride. you're going to get you, one of the runner's watches and not. Or maybe you bring your phone. Or bring yeah. your phone, yeah. All right, let's take a break. More with Paul Throp, Mary Jo Foley. We're going to talk about Office, Surface, Windows Phone, Xbox. I got to find out how Paul's been doing in the new COD Paul will do his little cod piece a little later on. There's no <laughs> dog sleep. <laughs> There's no dog, but there is Kevin Spacey. It's true. Same I, thing. I think that same thing. <laughs> Shame same on thing. you, Mary Jane. <laughs> Francis Underwood is no dog. Except he orders you around. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's not the other way around. He makes you big for treats. <laughs> yep. Our show today brought to you by Squarespace, the place to make your next website. Squarespace is so cool they've just launched their uh, version 7 they really on the heels of version 6 they've got they have great engineers working there and i think nowadays it's really become clear that a product is only as good as the team working on it and this is where squarespace is just knocking it out of the park i should explain what squarespace is it is web hosting of course you don't really see that part except that it always works it's always up it never bogs down because of so many visitors and all of that stuff. But then on top of that, you're running the Squarespace software, which is what you use. That's your interface to creating your website, your online portfolio, your blog. They, they have introduced now Squarespace 7, and it makes getting started much easier. It's now, you know, kind of there's it's more all-in-one, more included, simpler to navigate and operate in one seamless experience. For instance, you can live edit in the preview which is really great. You can see what your site looks like and, and modify it directly on the site. That is so sweet. So sweet. You could preview devices, uh, device uh, views as well. So you're sitting there on your computer, you're making your gorgeous Squarespace site, and then you say, hey, let me see how this looks on a, a mobile phone or a tablet, and you can see it. And by the way, you don't ever have to worry about that because uh, Squarespace is mobile responsive. All these great templates are totally mobile responsive, which is so cool. They even have a new template specifically for bands. It's called Horizon. Um, but they have templates for all professions. Um, the, the Horizon template includes stuff like, you know, your tour dates, your music player, a merchandise store. Just got, well, here's what you do. Go to squarespace.com, click the Get Started button, and try it. Let me show you Horizon. This is so gorgeous. Um, it's full, as with all of their stuff, it's full bleed. Uh, you get um, features built in, like listen, see the button, listen to album, buy on iTunes. But then, of course, completely customizable. So you can make it, I mean, obviously, this is a made-up band, but you can make it your band and your site. That's how Squarespace does it. They're just so great. And these do not look like cookie-cutter sites. Every Squarespace site is unique. 
Uh, you have instant access to professional stock photography from Getty, which is nice, built right in. Instant branded email setup through Google Apps, built right in. Uh, the the developer platform is superb. You don't need. I want. I kind of hesitate to talk about that because you you certainly don't need to be a developer to use Squarespace. But if you are, if you know you you know CSS and JavaScript and all of that, uh, the developer platform is stunning. Great apps too. The logo designer. Um, I mean, they just they, this just is so. I I I can't. I I know. I know. I know. I'm, all right. I'm gonna stop. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to stop swinging its praises and just tell you, go try it for free. Click the Get Started button. you got two weeks free, no credit card needed. When you decide to buy as little as $8 a month, and that, by the way, includes the domain name when you sign up for a year. Hosting and software. When you decide to sign up, though, use the offer code WINDOWS. We'll get you 10% off. E-commerce on all of their templates, too. Yes. Squarespace. And, by the way, if you're an existing customer, you can begin using Squarespace 7. Right now, go to the Settings tab to activate all the new features. That's nice, too. Thank you, Squarespace, for supporting Windows Weekly. And if you support Windows Weekly, make sure you use the offer code WINDOWS when you buy so that uh, Paul and Mary Joe get credit. Moving on, let's talk Office. We talked a little bit about Outlook for Mac on uh, Mac Break Weekly. The round, round consensus was, hey, if you have to use Outlook, I guess this is good. But it isn't exactly uh, a program Mac users will adore. I guess that means that the Mac office is going to be kind of just basically like Windows office, right? They're going to unify the platform. Is that right? Yep, that's yeah. correct. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, if you use it at work on uh, a PC, you should look the same on your Mac at home. But you can't really expect them to do something completely different. I, I linked to the wrong story on this uh, one, so it looks no. like it's my Microsoft fan story. <laughs> I just wanted to assure Mary Jo that I did not, in fact, link to my Microsoft fan story on every story that we're going to cover today. <laughs> That's all we care about. I'm like, wait, it was we're like going to my, talk more about my, my, my sort of um, passive-aggressive way. Of, <laughs> it's all about the man. <laughs> Sorry about that. I meant to link to Mary Jo's article. No, which I think it's I fine. Do, do, do we have confirmation <laughs> on the story you broke last week that uh, infinite OneDrive space uh, was available to all, cons all subscribers uh, to Office? Is that true? Yeah. And that's rolled out now? Or it's rolling no, out? No, uh, it's rolling out. And okay. I think uh, th some people, including myself, have seen 10 gigabytes. Uh, I'm sorry, 10 terabytes. Ooh, that, uh, show that's up. close to infinite. Just to get you kind of prime the pump. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, but yeah, that, it's coming. It's okay, coming. good. Yeah. And it's funny. I, the people who are getting 10 terabytes, I see them saying, hey, wait, I only got 10 terabytes. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yep, I know. Really? <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Oh, 10 terabytes man. is not unlimited. I'd just like to point out that is not infinite. <laughs> Although it is effectively infinite. I think I've used like 0. 0.000001 percent of my OneDrive storage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I should try this just to see what I got here. Yeah, you should see because it's not showing up as ten for everybody, but some people are sending us screenshots. Yeah, in the chat room, somebody in the chat room said, "Yeah, I got ten. Yeah, no, I got ten. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where would I see? Yeah, that? so that's for I everybody. That? That's for business and home. That's like all all of the office plans. That's really sweet. Uh, went to, I'm going to OneDrive.Live.com. It's churning, 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 <laughs> churning, churning, get more storage. They still have a get more storage button. You should probably not push that button. <laughs> you don't need to. Uh, but I think that's a big selling point, though. I love that. And I turned it on on all my phones and everything. Uh, yeah, 10 terabytes. Yay! Yeah. Woohoo! I like it at. Yeah, that's infinite. Yeah, pretty, pretty infinite. That's pretty good. Yeah. I'll take it. So, um, what else? What else can we talk about? Oh, a Dropbox. That's what's weird. Here they mm -hmm. are touting infinite OneDrive, and they do a deal with Dropbox. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. I guess they're saying yep. that they don't, it's fine. Whatever, however you want to use yep. us, just use us. Yep. You know, it, Paul and I were talking back and forth about this when they announced it. And you've got to remember, what's the cash cow that they're trying to push? Office, yeah. not right. OneDrive, right? right. <laughs> and so they, they'll do whatever they have to do for, for Office. They made a big point of saying, you know what? There's 35 billion Office documents in saved in Dropbox right now. So why not make it easy for people, wherever they want to use Office, to get to get their documents in and out? 
yeah. and save them how they want, share them how they want. So that's what this is about. It's about, you know, they, they want to make it easy for you as an office user, whether you're on iOS or Android or Windows, Windows Phone, because Dropbox, as part of this agreement, also agreed to develop apps for Windows Phone and Windows. So that was a good trade off for Microsoft, too. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. it's, uh, you know, it's not like, oh, wow, they just killed OneDrive. It's, wow, they just gave you another reason to use Office. Right. That's, that's how I looked at it. Right. And since, and we mentioned this last week, Dropbox is only really at this point reason to exist is because so many app developers integrate into it, you know. So yeah. having access to that is just one more great thing about Office, frankly. It should yeah. have. It yeah. should have access I, I, to that. I, I, it doesn't negate any of the great stuff that, about OneDrive that's going on. And, and you know, from Microsoft's perspective, they've just uh, offered unlimited storage to everybody. So if right. people don't use that, that doesn't hurt them. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. I mean, it's fine. You know, it's, it's fine. Awesome. All right. You've explained it. Yeah, I feel better. Yep. I'm out yep. now putting OneDrive on my new phone. Every I have a new phone every three minutes now. <laughs> thanks, thanks to the <laughs> rapid evolution of the internet. Yeah. Right. Uh, I put it on my Note 4, now I'm putting it on my uh, Droid Turbo. <laughs> uh, what, it's li what, is this, what it's like pumping terabytes of data into OneDrive. Are you doing that, Paul? Yeah. I'm doing it right now. That's why this is going so slow. <laughs> I'm why, Paul, why? Actually, you don't have to worry about that because the upload speed is so slow that it, could never, it would never impact well, the podcast. We talk about that all the time because, um, you know, Carbonite's a sponsor. And uh, and one of the yeah. things people say is, well, golly, you know, I have 18 terabytes of data and it's yeah. taken a while. Yeah, it might take a year or two at that with that kind of yeah. Yeah. amount of data. Uh, well, I've been trying different things. So I, I tried videos, which tend to be pretty lot, large files. I tried uh, photos. And now I'm on to documents, and um, you know it's been it's, it's like Star Trek movies, Leo. Every experience has been you know good, and then the next right. one's terrible. Um, I almost it, it's funny, like it seems to me that it has slowed down over time, which suggests that someone has caught on to the fact that I'm doing this or whatever, you know. But and by uh, the way, it could be your ISP as much as it is. Yeah, and I've been actually measuring. Is. I've been measuring my upload speed, and it's consistently what I should be getting right. when I measure it with you know net speed test or whatever, which makes me wonder if they're not specifically, you know, throttling this kind of traffic, which sounds like something that's too sophisticated for Comcast. And so no, then I... No, 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 no. I beg yeah. to differ, my friend. But anyway, it's taking a while. But, you know, I'm going to write about the document stuff soon. Um, it's taken longer to write about because it's taken longer to upload. But, yeah. you know, you run into some weird issues that are familiar to me from uh, home server and Windows server activities here at home like long paths, you know, that can be a huge problem. Um, so there's all kinds of little issues with it. But, you know, the truth is, I, I think for most normal people who don't have the crazy amounts of data that I do, um, you know, this is going to work fine, you know, for most people. Right. But, yeah, it's 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 going to take me a while. It's not, I'm not, it, and I'm not ever really replacing everything I do here at home, but uh, I think of this more as an uh, augmenting that. I think really what you should think of this is going forward uh, uh, rather yes. than say, hey, everything I've got now, I'm going to put Well, on so, this. you know, the truth is going for like uh, exactly two years ago, I started using OneDrive for my day-to-day -day data. And so I now have two years of work-related data that's all, right. all in OneDrive already. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm going back now and going over my kind of archival data or whatever you want to call it. And there is a lot of it. Oh, you've been, <laughs> you know? you've been like scanning in your paper photos and. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, I've got crazy amounts that, of stuff. But see, that's great though. Yeah. It's, um, this is Leo. This is a career. This is like not something you do on the side. It's like it. Re it really requires attention. So. Um, so you're seeing this is. In fact, we talked about this yesterday on security. Now somebody asked in one of the email questions to Steve. What's yeah. the best form of long-term storage? And I think cloud yes. probably is. Yes. If it's with a big company like Microsoft, because they're going to continue to. You might know the name of this. Uh, Amazon has a service Glacier. that's essentially Glacier. Glacier, thank you. Which I think of as cold storage, which right. makes sense with the name. Yep. yep. Um, the theory being, we'll hold it. It will be safe. You won't be able to get to it in a flash. The the point is, it's there if you need it. Right. 
And, uh, and I believe the way Amazon Glacier works is you could actually contact them and they'll send you a hard drive or something if you really need it. Well, and, it, um, and it, it apparently is offline. So, like, yeah. they probably have, remember in the old days of the tape uh, backups? Mm -hmm. you'd yeah, have, like, someone uh, like taking a reel uh, off of a uh, thing. And uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like Indiana Jones is a long yeah, that's how warehouse I picture it. somewhere. And, mm -hmm. um, and so they say, hey, it's cheap as long as you don't need it right away. So... I, I think that fundamentally backup strategy hasn't changed in the sense that you still want multiple versions, you need redundancy, and you need geographical separation. Obviously, the cloud gives you that. And so uh, that's what I mean. I don't think it's not like I'm going to get all my photos copied up from my server to OneDrive and then I'm going to erase the hard drive here at home. I mean, I, I need to still kind of work through how that works because I, you know, I can't just have one copy of it. Well, you one shouldn't. Drug. In fact, the prudent you know. thing would be to take advantage of this um, and, and other Amazon services. Amazon. Have them yeah. on every service. Yep. Um, and then um, going forward, that's easy. By the way, like you, I think you just basically mentioned this. I mean, on your phone, for example, you could I just turn retain, it on. You turn on OneDrive, but you retain the Android, uh, the Google one. Right. And so you've got it now. It's shooting up to two different places, and yeah. that works really well for the new stuff. That's what I you mean. Know, the, quest yeah. the question yeah. is the old stuff, right. and so. Mm -hmm. I have too much of it, but I don't think many people do. And so, you know, you could use uh, obviously Google Drive, you could use Flickr or Amazon Photos for your photos. You could, you know, there's all kinds of choices. But the, the important thing is if it's important to you, two, at least two. <laughs> you know, don't right. don't uh, don't have a single copy anywhere, no matter how trusty or exactly trustworthy right. those people yeah. are. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna uh, probably now that I think about it, use this as a place to put music uh and just do it over a long period of time right because i already have it's it on the, amazon yes, google and, right. and and apple but the funny thing is so i have i don't i didn't look at the number for the music but um you know i have some tens of i don't know what it, i shouldn't say i have some amount of music whatever it is and this is music i've ripped from cds that i literally still have in my cellar it's music that i purchased from services and downloaded right and now I don't consume music that way. I don't ever do anything with that music. I use, I, I happen to use Xbox music with the Xbox, you know, music, uh, the music pass, but um, I don't actually need this. I, technically I could probably just delete all of it. It doesn't really matter, but I don't mind put it in, putting it in a, in cold storage, you know? Tech so Potato gonna, says I, I can't put music in OneDrive? No. No, you can't. Although there's rumors, there's also rumors Microsoft's going to make the locker, music locker available in OneDrive, right? Yeah, but I mean, uh, depending on how you, yes. And by the way, that two years ago, they promised that exact feature. Yeah. Um, you could still put, I, I, you know, I have some music in OneDrive right now, and it's music that I know isn't in Xbox music. You know, I got some Beatles music or some soundtracks that just aren't there, whatever it might be. Um, on a PC or a Windows tablet, I can mark that stuff for offline use, and the Xbox Music app will see it, and it's in my collection. It just works. Uh, they don't have uh, music matching, so I can't get it to my devices. But if they ever enable that, that will solve that problem. The, so he's saying, well, the terms of service say you can't put copyrighted material up there. Mm. But I think... <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. I mean, every I, you know I what? have a ton of copyrighted material. Guess in what? Video. Everything you do is copyrighted by you. If you put your articles up there, those are that's yeah. copyrighted material. I don't think that. I don't know what. Hmm. I think that's just so that if you start sharing it from there, you're going to get. Look, I, there's a lot that has to improve here. I mean, last week when we talked about this, I talked about some of the stuff that Dropbox does that OneDrive doesn't. If you use OneDrive for business, you know that that service, the especially the uh, PC client or any client is not particularly sophisticated. It's not as good as the OneDrive consumer client. Right. Um, and it makes it less viable for this kind of thing that I'm doing. Not that I would pour my music collection into OneDrive for business or whatever, but um, you know, I wouldn't right now anyway because the way it works is terrible. I can't arbitrarily tell it I want some of it offline and some of it online. Um, and that has to change. But it's Microsoft, and the office guys are on the ball, and I think that this stuff is all going to happen you know, right. over the next year. This is good. I mean, really, this is this is what you want, which is a variety of archival storage choices. And I think Microsoft making this free with, and by the way, it's with an Office 365 subscription and not all of them. 
Right. Um, but some Office 365 subscriptions. Microsoft no. doing that is yeah, Actually, it's pretty much all of I them. I think it's all of them, right? Well, all, not the yeah. business. Isn't there like... Yeah, the business ones too. Oh, yep. Oh, good. All right. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Surprisingly, all of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, just shows you. Hard drive yep. space yep. is cheap. Ain't expensive anymore. Um, yeah. Let's sure. talk about Surface Pro 3, now seen on TV from coast to coast. <laughs> on <CNN. laughs> iPads everywhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they put, you know, it's too bad because it, 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 you watch the NFL, which I do every week a lot, Sunday, Monday, Thursday. Um, and they're, they're, they're big ads for Surface there. And you see the Surface everywhere. But when the athletes use it, they're in these giant rubber holders that could be yeah. anything in there. <laughs> well, well, could be I a think mirror. We're could Rest be them going. Those yeah, are good. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. sure they are, but yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, I mean, it, it does. It makes it harder to use it as a true product placement right, kind of right, thing. Right. I'm sure Microsoft knew that. But you can't just that. put a you can't put an iPad or a Surface out on the football field. I wouldn't no, think. No, no, it would be hitting each other with these things. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'll bend that iPhone. Yeah, I got you. Your head. Oh yeah, those guys could really bend yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, the government uh, now uh, or soon will be able to buy these for uh, this is like you have to go through a process, right, to get approval from the government accounting office before right. you can sell this to uh, the feds. Yeah. Right. They have this thing called the GSA schedule, General Services Administration. So right. something has to be on the schedule for people to buy it through an approved right. government RFP. Right. Um, so, But Microsoft says they've found that uh, one of the biggest potential audiences for Surface Pro 3 are government users. And so they said, hey, let's make it easier for them to buy it. The best way to do that is to get the GSA approval. So it's now going to be on the schedule, Surface Pro 3. Good. Yes, that's good. That's nice. It's nice. I think I think I saw Paul tweet something, though, that's worth pointing out. He, I, I think it was you, Paul, who said this, uh, that it seems like all the news lately is about Surface Pro 3. Right. Like whenever you hear surface news, it's about the Pro 3. You don't hear them talking about the ARM based surfaces at all anymore. You mean Windows? What yeah. was it called? Yeah, yeah. R something? It's, it was originally R called Surface RT, but then they just started calling it the Surface. Yeah. Um, and the latest version of that is Surface 2. Come on, RT. We've heard dead. nothing. Come on, it's dead. Come on. Well, we, uh, I don't Come know. On, you know, it's dead. <laughs> It's dead for now. <laughs> it's dead until at yeah, least it's... next year, um, because they need they need that version of Windows 10 that is going to run on both ARM-based tablets and phones. They need that. They can't really. I don't think they are really going to come out with another ARM-based Surface at least until that, and maybe not even after that point. I've I've heard some people say no more ARM-based Surface until only going forward. Right. But I, yeah, that's I, I that's some something some adult there has to stand up and say enough. You know. I know. Yeah, in a way. It, it, we've gotten to the point where you can't justify it anymore because everything that made Surface or Windows RT or the you know that platform special or whatever is possible on Intel. So why divide your... Well, mm -hmm. other, I, well actually, except, now that well, I've got, there's a few Except for phone, few of course. You know. Yeah, and yeah. also, um, doesn't... I think you could still say that Intel-based uh, Windows implementations have Windows rot over time and supposedly the... Yeah, yeah. arm based ones do not, and there no, was some true. sandboxing, right? There was also some sandboxing. Well, like, I, I guess I'm sorry. Uh, I, I was thinking more along the lines of um, tablets. Uh, yeah, uh, about for Windows the Phone or for phone devices, phones. It makes sense to have yeah. this closed platform. Um, you know, even on a tablet, you know, you, a, a 10 inch tablet that's you know two gigs of uh, RAM and small amount of storage. You might just want to run iTunes. It, that might be the one thing that puts it over the yeah. top. I would get this tablet if I could just run iTunes or whatever the app may be. Um, and you can't do that on Windows RT. And that's too bad. Yep. Yeah, so, well, yeah, it'll anyway, be interesting. We, it'll be interesting to see if they make any more, right? Any, if Microsoft yep. makes any more ARM-based tablets going forward. Right. I don't know if they will or not. Well, they make, but, they may, but they'll make Windows Phone tablets. Well, they'll make Intel-based tablets... Um, no, he said Windows Phone. So, Windows phone so those are ARM. So really, I don't if know if you, they'll make those. You don't think so? I mean, they'll make phablets, right? Yeah, they got the fifteen twenty yeah. six right. inches. That's yeah. I don't know if they'll go bigger than that, uh, but I bet some. I bet some of their OEMs will. I don't know if they will. Wouldn't it be cool? Reluctant WP guy says Lumia fifteen thirty with a Surface Pen, like a seven inch. A lot of people a wanted that. Pen. 
that's the Surface Mini, right? That's yep, what yep. that was going to be. And that and then you re then RT's dead. Who needs RT? Mm. <laughs> I, it'll be well, it'll be interesting to see if any any of the OEMs make a Windows Phone tablet or something with an ARM processor that is actually a tablet as opposed to a can, phone. Can you still, um, as an OEM, get RT? I think you can. Yeah, I don't think I right. I they just haven't think stopped. I think they took it off the market or anything. Yeah. <laughs> nobody wants it, but you could. <laughs> I no think one nobody is wants making it, yeah. it right now. Right. All, no all the companies that made right. you know V1 ARM tablets did not come right. back with V2. Right. They all walked away from it. Yep. And that's probably, as you said, the market has spoken. That's probably there's nobody bought it. Well, I remember the Lenovo Yoga, the first gen, the, the small one, the 11-inch version. My reaction to this was, wow, this is beautiful. It's too bad you couldn't get an Intel version of this. Yeah. You know, And then yeah. six months later, you could, and yeah. that one go. went away. There so. you go. Yeah. All right, Audible, and then we'll uh, continue on. We're going to get to a Paul's side of the fence, his side of the aisle with Windows Phone and Xbox. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's the groom's side. What the mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> First a word from, well, this is Paul's too, isn't it? Audible.com, greatest place. I've been listening to a really great Audible book called Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. I highly recommend it. Starts out as a kind of a normal novel. Uh, where, where you, It's one of those novels where... They, the first chapter is all about this person, and then the second chapter is about a seemingly unrelated person, and the third chapter is another seemingly unrelated. And they don't their stories then intertwine, and uh, it's wonderful because it's really about Big Brother, uh, corporate Big Brothers, you know, a, a Google style company that's uh, partnering with other Google style companies to collect all of your personal data and sell it back to you, and it's just great. I hope I haven't spoiled it. I don't think I have. It's easy to remember. Whiskey Tango Foxtrot or WTF. Anyway, this is something you could get for free along with a lot of other books. There are, this is the David Schaefer version. Apparently there are other books with the same name. Paul, uh, but you'll, let's not forget Mark Rosinovich, our favorite Azure mm -hmm. guy, who's got three really good, very uh, sophisticated technologically thrillers. Zero Day, uh, Rogue Code. The, they're the Jeff Aiken novels. Um, I can't remember what the other one is. Zero Day Rogue Code. Uh, probably if I go there, I'll I'll see the other ones. Uh, is it Trojan Horse? Yes. Uh, well, here's an interesting one. It looks like William Gibson has a new novel. Now, I'm a big fan of the man who created Neuromancer, one of my favorite books. Looks like uh, Gibson's got a new one, The Peripheral. All right. <laughs> Yeah. This is usually the part of the conversation where I say, you're a peripheral. You're a peripheral. No, you're a peripheral. <laughs> um, the, we interviewed, uh, uh, um, this is a really good book, Hieroglyph. We interviewed Larry Krauss on a Triangulation about this. This is, um, these are sci science fiction books with a positive look at the future. It's called Hieroglyph. And it's w some of the best people, uh, Elizabeth Baird, Cory Doctorow, Bruce Sterling, Neil Stevenson. Anyway. You know, short stories would be maybe if you've never used Audible, a good way to start because then you could, you know, listen in one chunk uh, at a time. You know, um, I don't know. You just you know what you should do? Just pick the book that you really want to listen to. The Innovators, the new Walter Isaacson book. Many of many of our uh, hosts are listening to this and say it's great. Here's the deal: if you go to audible.com/windows, you can get the, one of these books for free. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, You'll be signing up for the gold account. That's a book a month. Oh, this is such a good book. I highly recommend this. Neil Gaiman's American Gods. And this is a full cast production. So all the uh, all the Norse gods and the different gods come to life in this in such a great way. Love this book. What are you listening to now, Paul? So uh, they had a, um, a sale for Halloween, about, like horror books for six ninety nine. Oh, cool. So I bought like 10 of them. But <laughs> lately, I, I uh, the novelization of... Psycho, which of course is the basis for the movie and is shocking for when it came out in the 1950s. Oh, interesting. It's actually a, an amazing story and it's interesting to me how it differs from the movie in some ways. The basic plot and the characters are basically the same. But, uh, you know, um, Hitchcock has given a lot of credit for uh, kind of inventing this genre or whatever, but the truth is it, it's all in the book. I mean, um, it's, it's actually fairly amazing, but I got a bunch of Stephen King on sale 
Uh, and right before I did this, I, I had been reading actually another Stephen King or listening to is, uh, I think it's called pronounced Lysi's story, a Lysi's story. It's yet another Stephen King book about the, uh, like a writer, you know, <laughs> he seems to write a book, a lot of books about writers, but anyway, Robert Block, um, Psycho, the reading's really good. It's not super long, which is a big thing for me these days. You know what I uh, got is a, a, a dramatization, I think I mentioned this before, of Dracula. Yeah, I have that one too. That's fantastic. Tim Curry. Yeah. Alan yep. Cumming. Um, yeah, that's, oh, that's great. Comes to life. People don't know because they all know the movie and the so forth, but the movies. But Dracula was really a series of letters. The book, the original Bram Stoker novel, was written in 1897. It was a series of... Uh, of letters, and it's chilling when when it's done right, and they really did it nice. Anyway, <laughs> good luck finding a book. <laughs> 150,000 titles. It's just that's the challenge. There's so much good stuff. But if you've got a favorite author, I would recommend you pick something that you think you're just really going to enjoy because that'll give you a sense of how great it is. Listening in the car, listening at the gym, completely changes your relationship to working out. Here's the new Stephen King coming out in a few days. Revival. Yeah. Uh, 11, 11, that comes out. A small New England town, half a century ago, new minister, transform, ooh, scary. I'm just glad he's finally writing about a small New England town. <laughs> Probably there's a writer in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, with a writer. This yeah, is the, the main hardest, characters are hardest thing to choose is the first <laughs> book. But you know what? you got a whole lifetime ahead of you. A great reading. Audible.com slash Windows. First book's free. I uh, pay nothing in the first 30 days. That book is yours to keep. But I think you're going to love it. I think you're going to love it. Oh, hmm. This sounds interesting. I have to see if they have this on Audible. It's called Wish. Chatroom says, I'm now getting chatroom suggestions. I wonder if this is on Audible. <laughs> it's the making of Princess Bride. I don't know. Oh, jeez. Wouldn't wow. that be fun? <laughs> Only if it's read by the guy. What's that guy's name? Um, it's con inconceivable. William yeah. Sean. No, well, no. I was thinking of the main guy. But yeah. Oh, okay. Actually... They can have all the guys in it, or whoever's. You could certainly get the it. original Princess Bride uh, on Audible. That's for sure. Here it is, as you wish. As you wish, yeah. Inconceivable tales from the yeah, making Car of the. Carrie Elwes, yeah. There you go. Oh, exactly. Who's Carrie Elwes? Yeah, that's great. He's the main character. The oh, he's guy. Wesley. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and in fact, that's every. That's that sadness is the camaraderie of being back with those who are here tonight and who stood alongside me so many years ago. Rob Reiner, <laughs> Billy Crystal, oh, Carol of, Kane, Wallace Shawn. Yeah, it's basically the Chris whole cast that's left. Oh, and Andy. oh! If I'm wrong, and I'm never wrong. I'm getting this book. <laughs> there's so many great lines from this movie. Awesome. You know, have fun storming the castle. <laughs> Adding it to my cart. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yay! Love oh my goodness, I didn't know that existed. <laughs> the Dread Pirate Roberts. It's awesome that movie. Yeah, it's just it's really good. Audible.com slash windows. See, this is what happens when you're an Audible subscriber is you get together with other ones and they go, Hey, have you listened? It's like, whoa. Sorry, Mary Jo. Didn't mean to leave you out. That's all right. We gotta get I wonder you. if you I wonder if they have a book I'm reading that's What are awesome. you reading? Reading The Bone Clocks, David Mitchell. You know, uh, I read and listened to The Goldfinch, which uh, we had both. I yeah. love that one, too. Yeah, they that do have great. the bone clock. What's this about? It sounds a lot like your WTF book. Oh. Interleaved plots with characters carrying over between the different chapters. Ooh. Really good. Psychic, really, really good. Psychic phenomenon. Very good. <gasps> oh, and this is another dramatization. They've got uh, several readers. So that's kind of neat when they do that. It really comes to life. I bet the voices in her head are different voices. <laughs> All right, enough for that. Moving on. Windows Phone. You know, I've been, uh, I, I put the Here app, by the way, on my um, Note 4. Awesome. Downloaded the United States. Yeah. Fabulous. Now I can't find it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you can't find the app? No. <laughs> what um, you? Maybe, they re maybe they renamed it. Oh, I bet it got renamed because they were renaming everything that was Nokia to Lumia. I was searching for Nokia, so let me search for Well, Nokia. no, but those wouldn't be among those. Oh, um, here wouldn't, because oh, right? Yeah. No, because that's yeah, still Nokia. Are, that's still actually Nokia. That's still it should Nokia, be, right. That's right. It, yeah, it should be under H. <laughs> here, maps here. for Android, would that be it? That yeah. could be it. <laughs> but then I, I do that search. Where are you doing this? On Android uh, store. Do I have to go somewhere else? Oh. Oh, I got it from Samsung last time. That's yeah. Right. It's well, no. 
Well, it's no, not it's, on the it's Google Play Store. It's yeah, it's broadly available, but I think you have to go to your Maps Online to get I it. I get it. Okay. So, so they re, they're getting rid of the Nokia name even in software now. Well, but uh, yeah, so not the for parts this, of Nokia that went is, to Microsoft right, the mobility are parts. being rebranded. So the apps are being rebranded rebrand to Lumia. And so they basically um, completed that process this week. So I think the Lumia camera app was the last one to um, cross over the other side, as we say. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh Popeye. Yeah. Well, so I if you use a Lumia, you know that if you would go to the apps list, all the action used to be in the end. In the end section. And now it's <laughs> in it the like, L. It's like Nokia, 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 Nokia. You know. Levels and up. Now it's, yeah, it's all in L. And that just yeah. happens in the update. You don't have to. Yep. And then uh, the still, the phones are not yet, but will in, imminently be renamed. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't think they're going to rename the existing phones. No, but they yes, can't the reach point, out point. to my 1520 <laughs> and scratch off stickers. the Nokia. Here, would you put this sticker a, on here? Here's a 3D here. printer. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a new case for you. Just line it up exactly right, because if you don't, <laughs> is there a Microsoft? Are they going to put the Microsoft logo on it? Or uh, yeah, they are. Yeah. Yep. Lumia's. Lumia. No more, yeah. So no more Windows Phone devices, right? That's oh. just going to be Lumia's. Oh, from that's Microsoft. interesting. From but Microsoft, yeah. from if Microsoft. you're a third party and you're making Windows phones, it's going to be Capital Window Small Phone. Oh. Because it's not Windows Phone isn't a thing anymore like it has been. Instead, right. it's going to be you're making Windows phones. <laughs> Just because that wasn't confusing enough. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I'm editing your bear pig and laughing to myself. Okay, so <laughs> do not. <laughs> Don't edit. Do my not bear mess with Joe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay. It's misspelled. Don't fix it. No, it's not. <laughs> but delicious is misspelled. Okay, thank you. Oh, delicious is misspelled. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Paul's done. <laughs> nice. I'd be so terrible. I, you know, terrible at sneaking up on anyone. I would just be laughing the whole time. <laughs> he is not very good at uh, at yeah. uh, the the bat the, the the. All right. Keeping a secret. It's keeping a secret. What is that in Call of Duty when you sneak up behind somebody and whack them in the head? Well, I, I mean, usually you knife them as <laughs> knife. So, yeah, love that. Um, <laughs> sorry, that's bloodthirsty. That's terrible. That's one of the good things about the new game. They got the knifing thing right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you play Call of Duty, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes the knife mechanics get screwed up. It's, right, it looks weird. Yeah. Well, it doesn't work right. You, the timing's wrong. Right. It's just uh, they got that right. They so. call that the throttle maneuver. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got throttled. Throttled from behind. <laughs> <laughs> and then you hear me giggling. It's exactly like real life. I think we have a show title. Um, uh, eight, eight, Lumia 830 will be overpriced, says this note. So, what yeah, so there's, two, so there's two new Lumia devices that are coming out sometime soon. One of them is the Lumia 830, and the other one's the 730 or 735, depending on which market you're in. Um the 830 is going to be an AT&T, but it's, if you want to buy it out of pocket, you know, sans contract, it's going to be $450, which is, yeah. mm, it's a little tough. Dumb. Dumb. For that, what'd you say? Dumb, Dumb. she said. <laughs> Dumb. It, oh, okay. Dumb. Should it, I, I mean, really, I mean, uh, that's, look at, I just paid $650 for my Droid Turbo. Yeah, but. Right. I, I guess if you if you were to look at the Lumia lineup and you compare the prices of devices and you sort of think, like, where, where should this fall? It, this thing is right in the middle between a $129 Lumia 635 yeah. and a, I think it's $500 Lumia Icon or five fifteen and 20 So the middle of that price range is not $450. Right. <laughs> it's $300 or, you know, $315 or whatever it worked out. Um, it's too expensive, you know, for what it is. It's too bad because it's it's it positioned as an affordable flagship, but really it's just a mid-level phone, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with mid-level phones. In fact, the 735 is wonderful. I'm using it every single day now. Like I, this is the phone I actually prefer to use. And this is not a high-end phone. It's wonderful. Um, the 830 is a great phone. It's just not, not at that price. Um, it's too bad. However, if you do buy it from AT&T, at least in the beginning, you will, and you don't have to buy it that way, obviously. You're using the 735? 
Yeah. The smartphone made for selfies? Yes. That's your preferred phone? Yep. <laughs> it is? It's So it's even weirder than you think because I actually think the things that make this phone special have nothing to do with that selfie camera. In fact, I don't think the selfie camera is all that good. Oh. Oddly enough. The back, the, actually, the rear camera is... a selfie stick, right? You yeah, I think you're right. That's true. I do have a selfie so stick. You don't need that. It's so funny because this is totally how they're pushing this is the I selfie know. camera. I actually don't think that the selfie camera is all that special. The the camera on the back is fantastic. It's actually really nice. Um, the phone itself is wonderful, lightweight. You know, it's it's. I hand it to people and say, "Tell me the first thing you think about when you pick this phone up." And they they also the same thing. Oh my god, it's so light. I know. So Paul is it's a crazy. twenty year old girl. We figured this out now. <laughs> At heart. At yeah. heart. A, a Call of Duty playing. Um, <laughs> 20 year old girl. 20 year old girl. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. That's interesting. Yeah. You like it because it's small and light. I love it. Yeah. I mean, I, I and, you know, and the, the, ca the camera is good. Yeah. yeah. I think the camera is just as good on that phone as it is on the 830. It's but still not out, right? I mean, you, you, you're. Uh, that's the thing. And so the problem with that one is we don't know what the price is on that one. And I think we only know that Verizon is carrying it here in the United States. And they've already said they're not going to ship it until early 2015 because you know Verizon's right on the ball um, oh, and this is are using wireless charging I like that and it comes with a little dock and that's nice, it's nice. yeah it's a nice does phone. it have glance that phone no so no oh. it, it, this is the weird thing about these phones so the 735 versus the 830 each one of them has little pluses and minuses and so the 830 has glance and by the way the other thing you get with glance that I really like is double tap to wake it up um, you can't love, do that on a separate love love, love that, that. Yep. yeah because if you think about it, if your phone's sitting there and it's, it did something, you want to look at it, if, tapping the screen will bring up the pin. You tap the pin and then away you go. Right. But to turn it on otherwise, you, you pretty much have to pick it up. You know, and that, I know, first world problems, I get it. But I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a different operation, you know, than just tapping the screen. It's not, tapping screen is nice. It's a nice feature. I but really seven, like that. So happening. this is the uh, this is the uh, eight thirty, right? Not, also not available. This is a five inch. Well, it's coming out this month. This um, month, okay. On AT and T. All right. It's gonna be. You know, uh, I don't. I think the contract price is ninety nine dollars. Obviously, you can get it with. Um, I think it's ninety nine dollars. You can get it with uh, the next plans. You know, for various amounts of money per month. You know, for twelve or eighteen months. Those are probably better deals than paying cash for it. I, I had kind of hoped that you could buy this thing out of pocket and it would be a reasonable 350 sub 350 price, like you say, on the Nexus 5, but um, it is not, and that's too bad. Yeah, looking at you the know, specs, it's a 720p 5-inch phone. It shouldn't be an yeah. expensive well, one. Well, here's what you want to compare it to. Um, what else could you buy for seven for $450 out of pocket? iPhone 5C. Right. And I'm sorry, I, no offense, Windows Phone fans, I'm with you on this one, but... If you were to show those two phones to anybody, yeah. basically, on Earth, buy the 5C. they would choose the they yeah. would choose the five C. Yeah, uh, ten megapixel camera. It's a Snapdragon four hundred, kind of an older processor. Yeah, it really. Yeah, at one point two gigahertz. Yeah, it's a it's a mid to low. So level. the the performance on this thing is not awesome. It's seven thirty five. Same thing. I mean, I, you kind of suffer through it. Mary Jo will know this from using many Windows phones. When you're in the camera app, and you want to look at the picture you just took or whatever other pictures. You press that circular icon, and on these two phones, you you wait a you wait a couple of seconds. You know, it's a, it lights up first, like it's going to do something, and then eventually it appears. And it has that kind of leisurely performance. That's what you get with that kind of processor, which is common to those two phones. Yeah. So that, that, you know, that phone's not coming to Verizon, right? The eight, the eight. No, uh, this the eight thirty. Um, Should Mary Jo I, replace uh, her icon with a seven thirty five? No. No, it's not no, gonna. No, no. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, no. I'm gonna wait. I'm. You know, we we should bring this up too because I think Paul's heard the same thing as me. We're both. I think we're both hearing no new flagship phones for the rest of this year on Windows Phone. I'm hearing nothing, which equates to that because usually yeah. you do By hear now, something. Now they would have said something. I mean, this is yeah. This is actually a big problem. In fact, I meant to write a story about this today. Now what? You know, in other words. You're a Windows Phone person. You really want the next Windows Phone. Maybe you bought a 920 two years ago, over two years ago, and you're wondering, what the heck? Um, uh, maybe you, you you want something newer than a 1520 that isn't as big as a 1520. Um, 
they really don't have it. They're not going after that part of the market right now. I'm not saying they won't. But these mid-level devices are nice for what they are, but they don't satisfy the needs of the people who love the photography stuff that you get with the 10, 20, 15, 20, Icon, 930, whatever. Um, it's a problem, you know. If the HTC One had a, a wonderful camera, even a slightly better camera, I think you could make a great case for that device. But it's the camera that does it for me. I can't, I don't know, maybe they fix it in software or something. It's possible. But right now, I, I just, I can't get excited about that. Although, by the way, that phone's coming to AT&T on Friday as well. Because mm. that started out on Verizon, right, back in... When did that launch? Uh, August or before Which August? One? August? The, I the HTC? Icon? Oh, the HTC. No, yeah, that the was M8. August, yeah. right? Oh. Yeah. August, yeah. So it's coming to AT&T this week. That's a nice yeah. phone. Actually, that it's a nice beautiful. Phone. That's probably the one beautiful. I'd recommend. Except Bad for the camera. camera you know, it depends on <laughs> yeah. what... Really? Uh, well, yeah, for some people, not that's good. not important. And if that's not important, beautiful phone. Yeah. And, you know, if maybe important. if you hadn't used another um, Lumia phone, you wouldn't notice the camera as much. But once you've used well, the I, Icon I, or the 1020, it's like you're really spoiled. Or any iPhone, on the <laughs> you know, yeah. or yeah. a lot of Android phones. You know, the, the Galaxy yeah. phones tend to have good cameras. Um, even the Nexus 5, which a year ago when it came out, had a garbage camera. I don't know, through yeah. software or because of that Google camera app, whatever. That camera today is fantastic somehow. So that tells me you can make improvements through software. Um, to a camera, um, you know, kind of like we did with the Hubble telescope, I guess. I don't know. But um, so there's hope for the HTC One, I guess. My, but my fear for the HTC One is that actually that phone's been around for a while. And those complaints about the camera existed when this thing was on Android. Um, and there are features on Android you can do with the HTC One camera that you can't do with the Windows Phone camera. And it's like, eh, okay, so. But otherwise, um, that phone is great. I, yeah. That was the. I think that was the only loner phone I've ever had that I really did not want to send back, but I made myself. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the cameras yeah. that ultra pixel, four megapixel, and it does make sense yeah. with the Android software that they included Zoe's and all that. Do you, you don't you don't get that on Windows? I don't remember the exact list of things that we didn't get. Oh. They had but, a no, lot of nice features. There's stuff you could do in Android. Good low light. Yeah. yeah, but you're right. I mean, I guess. Uh, I guess. You're spoiled by Lumia. That's the problem. Yeah, pretty much. It is a problem. And it, 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 it's, it's a problem on a number of levels because uh, you also get used to uh, the slowness of the Lumia stuff. And so the high-end Lumia cameras tend to be slow because the, uh, the processor that are in, in the chipsets in the, that are in those phones are fine for Windows Phone. They're fantastic. But these really high-end cameras really stress that stuff out. And um, you, it's something, even on these mid-level new phones, you kind of put up with it. Um, you can't really click, 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 and go. It's it's like click one, two, three, click one, two, three. You know, it's yeah. You want to be faster than that. Yeah, yeah. it's a little tough. Uh, Kidoki. Um. So Friday for the AT and T version of the uh, M8. That's nice. Yep. By the way, that's a. Uh, as a flagship phone, if you were to buy that one off contract, six ninety nine. Yeah. Well, we're used to that. I mean, that's how much these. Yeah. Uh, yes. High end, uh, you know, yep. Android phones cost. Wow. I'd rather, I mean, you could buy five Lumia 635, so that, yeah. that would be yeah. a better deal right there. I mean, and there are the cheap Android phones, phones but the flagship phones are expensive. Yeah. And I know because I buy a new one every week. Yes. It feels like. Yeah, I know, crazy. I know what you're saying. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, I just, I was lucky I got the. <laughs> This is not for this show, but Google apparently now is going to put like five more Nexus Six phones on sale every Wednesday. So, well, by the way, I just I just looked at Twitter. Daniel Rubino tells me that Lumia Seven Thirty Five does have double tap to wake. Oh, and it's separate from Glance. So maybe that's just something that I haven't enabled in settings. I'll look at that. So that's that cool. is a really nice feature. It's going to be in Lollipop too on Android, and I just I, you get hooked it's, on it. Yeah, it's one of those goofy things. I, I it's you like uh, the, so. it's, yeah. it's like Touch ID on an iPhone. Right. Uh, once you've used that, oh, typing see, in yeah. a pin is a pain in the yes. ass. <laughs> you know, like yes. it, it's weird how it makes it hard to go back. Xamarin free for students. That's good. I know. How about that? Yeah. yeah. Um, they just announced it today. In fact, so right. if you're a student uh, and you want to build 
iOS or Android apps using C Sharp, they have a, a thing on their blog today, apply now and visit the student page. So yeah, a lot of people uh, talk to me all the time about, I would use Xamarin, except it's so expensive. I can't afford it. And that's why I wish Microsoft bought them because maybe they'd make it cheaper or free. Well, Microsoft never bought them. Doesn't look like they're going to buy them at least anytime How soon. How much is it? Oh, man. It's, even for the it's, lowest end, it's multiple thousand. I believe thousands. it's 1300 a year, I, I, at least. Is it? Uh, it's, yeah. very, it's very expensive. It's, it's yeah, I think so. It's pricey. Yeah. I mean, if you're, a, if you're a development house, that's not pricey, but. Right. But if you're kind of a one man shop or whatever, yeah. yeah it's Enthusiast developer much. wants to write right. your first ad. Hobbyist Way developer. too much for an enthusiast. Yeah. yeah. So that's good. Yeah. So you could, a student should get it for free. That's good. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah. Yep. I think so. Very good. Yep. So that's a, that's a big thing today. Everybody's tweeting about that today. Well. Everybody who's anybody, I should say. <laughs> well, let me qualify that. <laughs> <gasps> everyone is everyone, Leo. <laughs> I'm tweeting about Master, the Master Chief collection of Halo. That's what I'm tweeting about. Ooh. Very excited. What was it now? It's 45 gigs plus uh, they're going to get another. More. 40, I thought. 40, 20 more updates. Oh, yeah, That's a, a lot huge more, yeah. update the day it comes Double out. Double. It's coming, right? When is it? November 12th? One week from today? Mary Jo, Paul and I are taking the week off. All right. I'll, I'll I'll carry the show. We'll do an all enterprise all the time show. <laughs> I'll get uh, Father Robert in here for that. Yeah. He and I will chat on all things enterprise. So I bought it and I guess it's been downloading <laughs> ever since the initial stuff, right, Paul? And then uh, before yeah. I could play it on the 12th, I'll have to do one more update. One massive update. Uh, well, I, I think you could start playing it. I think it, it will support that. You don't oh. have to wait. Right. Uh, as long, Especially if you're going to play a single player. I think you're, you're good Did to go. Did you do the modern, what is it, modern warfare? Did you do the day no, up ahead version of advanced yeah. warfare? Yeah. So, you know, every year I used to go and wake up my son and go to Best Buy at midnight. And um, this year um, I woke him up at midnight and we just started playing. And actually... Yeah, he threw his Xbox out in the living room so we could, you know, throw controllers at each other. And, awesome. Um, and, yeah, we stood up for a couple hours, and um, it worked. I mean, I on on the screen it said, yeah, 1201 ET, come back. You can launch the game at 1201. I launched it. And launched oh, you. It right <laughs> and uh, nice. So, yeah, it worked great. Oh, that's great. Uh Mary Jo says to budget 45 minutes for this discussion. <laughs> <laughs> that was Paul. I'm like, I'm going to go to rattle while you guys chat. <laughs> yeah. I, was just, I am just not. Just Mary Jo was paying attention. <laughs> I bought, uh, I bought, Mo what is it? okay, I'm confused. Is Advanced Warfare? Advanced Warfare is the new one. Modern Warfare was the old one. Well, yeah, there was a series of three games, Modern Warfare. There was yeah. a series of two game so far. I Modern think Warfare was the one that Black launched Ops. with the Xbox One, and that's the one I bought. And I played it, and I like it. No, it's actually, great. that was go that was Ghosts. Ghosts, okay. I played it, and I liked it, but it's just too much for me. I'm, uh, I'm, I can't. And this is more, though, Leo. I mean, um, Advanced Warfare it's is the future, even more. Right? We're in the future? Yeah, it's like, it's like, um, it's like Titanfall with none of the shame of playing Titanfall. <laughs> I know I'm going to hear from people on that one. Um, so it, it's it, in the sense that it has Titanfall-like aspects where you can kind of jump high in the air and it's got the vertical component. And uh, I think they've done a pretty good job um, with it. I, I think the biggest compliment I can pay it is that as a Call of Duty player, I have trouble playing other shooters because they feel so different. And this game is Call of Duty. It was ver instantly. There was no transition period. It just worked. All the... Layouts and everything are exactly what I would expect. And so in the play mechanics are the same. Simple. It was an easy I do, transition. It's one of the things I love about Titanfall is that it, that running the walls and jumping. and Yeah, so it has those aspects. I don't aspects. care about the Titans. I could do without the Titans. Yeah, I don't care about that either personally. But um, you can, And if you don't like that stuff, they have classic playlists. And so it's basically the new version of Call of Duty minus the jumping in the air and you know, the vertical stuff. I'm telling you, I love Sunset Overdrive. I know it's not your game. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not making fun of it. I just don't. Oh, it's so great. It's funny. It's thing. Every time you die, you come back in a different weird way. Okay. It's really funny. And um, 
It's very fast moving. It's fun. But mm. it's, you know, because you're, you're doing a lot of uh, riding the rails and yeah, yeah, yeah. skateboard style moves. Bouncing on cars. Boing, boing. Um, but a bit of, but, but, oh, what else is there to say about this? Um, Fifty dollars off every console version, including bundles. What? Uh, what? Uh, what is that? What is what? what so uh, what? this came up. This came up last week, but is in effect now, and which means that now through the end of the holidays, if you buy an Xbox One, any version of the console, any bundle, uh, fifty dollars off the normal price, and that means the base entry price for the console is $350, although with sales and things, you can get it even less than that. Um, good. But I mean, I, I guess uh, if, if I could drag Mary Jo kicking and uh, screaming into the Xbox One conversation, I guess I'm curious because I've looked at many of the milestones over the past year. Titanfall was one of them. Uh, the connectless Xbox $400 price tag was one of them. Um, what's it going to take, you know, for Xbox One to actually beat the PS4? And if they never beat the PS4, does that matter? I mean, are we going to be just, you know, we're number two, we're number two. I mean, I don't know. Here's what it's going to take. I got to show you right now. This is going to be, you can't, you can't do this on a PlayStation 4. <laughs> nice. That's Sunset over. I like that baby. the teddy bears have both a bomb strapped to them. <laughs> and These are, those are actual weapons in the game. Yeah. It is such a great game. So I'm just saying, and that's a Microsoft exclusive, right? That you you and you can't play Sunset Overdrive on <laughs> PlayStation Four. Oh. So don't. I have important beer news. Uh oh, beer news. We need a beer news sounder. Sorry, my local uh -uh. brewery has just released my favorite beer this for this year's version of it. So <laughs> somebody's saying in the chat room that it really isn't going to be Xbox One versus PlayStation because 4K. Is coming. Not in the next 10 years, it ain't. That was how long it took to get the Xbox One out. I don't see a 4K console. Yeah, like, uh, remember when the Xbox 360 shipped, it was technically just 720p. Right. And they were able to upgrade it, you know, to 1080p, which a lot of people at the time were like, yeah, really? You know, yeah. and they did. Um, so... Based on the performance I see on the Xbox One, I don't think we're going to be doing 4K gaming anytime no, soon. No, it's not even 1080p, is it? Or the, uh, new, the new games well, are, it, aren't they? Yeah, they can be. I mean, obviously, um, one of the controversies is that a lot of them haven't been. I will say, you know, Call of Duty graphics are noticeably better, you know, than previous games, and that, maybe that's true on other um, platforms. I'm not sure. They're, they are saying uh, in many cases that you just can't do 1080p on some of the, like Sunset Overdrive is never, is 900p, is never going to be yeah. 1080p. Just too much going just on. Yeah. Too much going on. That's what I love about it. I guess you could have a really boring game. You could have Pong 1080p. <laughs> All right. So Paul, let's... was your question for me, did I think it mattered if they beat the PS4 ever? Yeah. I mean, or, or yeah. were you just trying to make sure I was awake? I wasn't sure which. No, I'm actually curious because <laughs> uh, you can because I I tend to come at this from kind of a fanboy perspective, yeah, yeah. and yeah. I mean, thinking about it just from pure kind of market share, yeah, does it matter? You know, they're selling millions of them, well, but they're know, being outsold you know, every month. I, th I think you have to remember with Satya Nadella's new like productivity and platforms mission, they kind of downplayed hardware quite a bit. Right. And they yeah. said, you know, we'll stay in hardware and we'll still make some things like Xboxes and surfaces and phones. But it's not like we're, we're, we're not just making hardware to make hardware. We're going to make it to show off certain experiences and um, kind of show people why our software and services matter. So if you look at it that way, I think they would like to be number one, but I don't think they feel they have to be number one in hardware. I think they care more if they're number one in software and services. Hmm. Okay. That's just my outsider's take as a non-gamer. I just kind of wonder, you know, this holiday season comes and goes. If they don't reverse these trends over the course of the holidays, it's like, so 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it gets, yeah. it, it starts to get weird, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, de decoupling the connect was a good start, right? That Yeah. And they, that, and they had their best month they ever of Xbox one sales in August right. and yep. still didn't outsell the Prius for Isn't it really though? Okay. I'm, this is just me. Ex yep. Exclusive titles that, that drive console sales. Historically, but also remember that assumes that the consoles are um, uh, fairly identical from a functional standpoint, which and not. are fairly identical okay. from a pricing Price. standpoint, right? Okay, uh, right. which they haven't been. Um, right. If the only differentiator is the games, then it would be a differentiator. Remember, in, in the last gen, uh, Sony came out uh, in limited quantities, and they had a very expensive console, and they justified it by saying, "Well, we have Blu-ray, and we're so much more powerful, and it's worth the price." It was like exactly the same message Microsoft had with the Xbox One. I thought that was kind of a clueless way for Sony to market stuff back in 2006. I thought it was clueless for Microsoft to do that last year. And of course, the market has spoken and they decoupled the Xbox, brought down the price. But it worked, uh, didn't it work for the PS3? I mean... Over, well, by the end of the console generation, PS3 sales went up and up. And actually, the way it is now, they've sold more PS3s and Xbox Ones. Right. But... Threes, not fours. Uh, sorry, threes. the three sixties. Uh, threes right. versus three sixties. Right. Um, but at first it didn't. At first it didn't. Yeah. See, I think physical media are so is now so unimportant. I know that it doesn't matter. It, you have a yeah. Blu-ray player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not a. Oh, for, I, yeah, it's it's decouple it. Get get it out. Get that out of there. Yeah, I agree. Not as expensive probably as the uh, Connect, but mm. you could get the price down. I'm just saying, Sunset Overdrive. They should be pushing that. There's, that's the only way you can play it, right? Is Xbox One? It's Microsoft Studio. The best part of Connect um, would require a ten dollar microphone. You know, I right. I, I don't understand right. Right. why this thing is. You're right. There's no need for know, the motion. Yeah, voice control is tied to a one hundred and twenty five dollar Boondoggle, right. I and mean, it's just it's too bad. <clears throat> is the because it's awesome. The voice control is awesome. And Halo Master Chief Collection exclusive. Or is yeah, that going to be on sure. three sixty two? No, that's Xbox, Xbox One. Xbox One only. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to be spending the next couple of months playing like a 10 year old version of Halo that looks better now on <laughs> the Xbox One. No, but it's, I mean, those are good games. You know, they're gonna, it's going to be good. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, I'll stop doing a silly dance. And when we come back, <laughs> the back of the book coming up. Paul Thorat, Mary Jo Foley. We are talking Microsoft on Windows Weekly. One of my favorite things to do of a Wednesday afternoon. Our show today brought to you by Carbonite Online Backup. If you have one computer at home or a dozen at work, Carbonite has a solution for you. And, uh, you know, Carbonite has always offered unlimited backup. I, you know, a lot of, we're talking about OneDrive unlimited. Carbonite's always been unlimited. You pay one flat rate, $59.99 a year for a single computer, and then back up what you want. Now, that's pretty awesome. You don't have to measure it. You don't have to think about it. You don't get to get a bill because, oh, you backed up more. No. And it's great for business, too. In fact, Carbonite has hybrid, hybrid appliances for uh, businesses with a local and cloud backup. Carbonite backs up 350 million files a day. They will get your business back up within 15 minutes or less. That's their guarantee. 50,000 small businesses trust them. You need Carbonite. It's automatic. It's continuous. It's cloud backup with total data security. Yes, it's HIPAA compliant. That's, that's what you need. It is secure. It is safe. And you are going to be able to sleep at night. In fact, you can even see the stuff backed up on Carbonite. Just log on to your Carbonite account on any computer. You can download any file. They even have free apps for phones and tablets. So it's it's cloud storage you can access anytime. It's it's a backup that you can rely on. It's automatic and it's 59.99 a year for everything on a single computer, but they have plans for all kinds of systems for business, for personal. Visit carbonite.com, pick the plan, try it free, but do use the offer code windows so you get 2 free months with purchase. Great support. Carbonite support comes directly from the US. People who really are great. In fact, I got a, an email from somebody who was so fantastic. I wonder if I can find this. Um, I sent it along the Carbonite folks. He was just so thrilled. He had had a crash. I think it was at his business. Carbonite sent him a hard drive and had him up and running. And he was just really thrilled with the, the support personnel and the, and the extra links they went to to 
to get him back. That's what you want. Somebody on your side. Come in, somebody, Carbonite's going to get your back. Carbonite.com, the offer code Windows. Try it free. Get two months free with purchase. We thank them for their support of Windows Weekly. Paul Therott, Mary Joe Foley. Time for the back of the book. We'll kick things off with Mr. P, Mr. T. <laughs> Mr. PT. <laughs> PT time. Yeah. Your tip of the week has nothing to do <laughs> with Windows. You know, if you're an Apple guy, uh, you buy an Apple TV for the living room. It's really simple. If you're a Google guy, you buy a Chromecast, or now you can get like a Nexus Play device, whatever it's called. Um, you know, if you're an Amazon guy, you, Amazon makes devices for the living room. But the thing we don't have on the Microsoft side is a low-end Microsoft device that does all that stuff. Kind of a like an Xbox that doesn't play games kind of thing, you know, like a $99 whatever. And increasingly, even though the Microsoft services like Xbox Music and Xbox Video are not on there, it seems like the one to get is a Roku, like a modern Roku. Um, a Roku streaming stick is about $50 or $60. Roku 3 is about $99. They support all the online services you would expect, you know, Netflix, Hulu, Pandora, yada, yada, yada. They support Google Play now, which is a big deal. And if you're into the PC stuff and you want to get something from a PC, uh, I'm sorry, a Windows-based phone or a Windows-based tablet or PC onto your TV, it supports Miracast. And so you can do screen mirroring. Um, it's increasingly the kind of obvious one to get. Um, I, I really do wish that Microsoft would put its services on there that would kind of put it over the top. But yeah, I mean, the only thing not there is Apple. I chose. It's Apple stuff. That's right. Yeah. Um, but, but I think if, every, if you're... Including, and by the way, Amazon is not on Apple. So I think that there's a real compelling reason to go with Roku unless yeah. you're an Apple person. I oh, uh, Amazon's on Roku as well. Right. Um, it, it's it's really neat. Yeah. So if you... Yeah. If you have Apple stuff, if you've got $1,000 worth of iTunes movies purchased, I mean, you're going to have an Apple TV. There's no way around that. Um but if for some reason you're buying a, a bunch of Xbox, you know, imagine you spent $1,000 on Xbox video movies for some reason, which is a horrific thought, but but you did. <laughs> um, well, I mean, what's the alternative? What are you going to do? You're going to build like a like a home theater PC and put it in your living room? You're going to buy an Xbox One for $300 plus? You could, but um, you could use Miracast too. And Roku does Miracast. And it has all that other stuff. And frankly... When you're doing things like watching Netflix or Hulu Plus or Amazon Prime Video or whatever, you know, a tiny little hockey puck that has no fan in it is with a nice little dedicated remote um, is a better experience than a big honking PC or Xbox One with a fan and all that kind of stuff anyway. So it's got it's kind of got a lot going for it. Um, Clarify Miracast for me. Is is that only from my PC or can I Miracast from other devices? So like, Miracast. Could I Miracast yeah. from an Xbox One? No. Uh, no, 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 but you, but you would hardwire that into the TV. That's true. Um, it's already in the set. So Miracast is compatible with Lumia. Most Lumias, modern Lumias. Um, it could work on any Windows phone, but I believe only Lumia support it right now. Uh, Windows 8 devices, Windows 8, one, et cetera. So surface, obviously, uh, it works on Android phones and tablets as well. And so it gives you that as well. I, I would have said before Google play came on, it would, this is a viable way to get Google play content on your TV as well. Uh, using, well, I mean, if you had an Android um, smartphone, using a Miracast device like Roku is the same experience as using Chromecast, basically, except you don't get the second screen deal. Right. Um, and, and this thing does all this other stuff. Wi-Fi, but it's Wi-Fi direct, and wi so it doesn't direct. require. Direct. Yeah, you don't have to be online. It works offline. Uh, it's a direct connection between the two devices. Do you use it a lot? Yeah, and I, <laughs> I, I do. I, I, the truth is, I u normally would use these other things more. I would use, you know, Netflix directly on the Roku. Right. Um, because I've been testing. Microsoft has these Miracast devices they've been putting out over the past month, and so I've been testing them. And so I've been trying to get. I'm trying to convince my my kids it's the hard sell, but I've been doing it myself, using Netflix over Miracast instead of Netflix direct, just to kind of get a feeling for how reliable the connection is and how well it works and all that kind of stuff. And the truth is. It's a better experience if you can do it direct. But Miracast, to me, is like, like that last mile solution in the living room. It's, I, I have this, you know, Xbox, uh, I rented a movie on Xbox video on, on the plane, for the plane ride home. I only watched half of it. I want to finish it at home, but I want to do it on the HDTV where I don't have an Xbox. This is how I can get it on the, on the screen. So it works for that kind of stuff. It's good. So you run a Miracast app or... 
So the mirror cast is just running in the background on the Roku. It's actually, you'll see it there all the time. So if you go to, um, on Windows Phone is how I typically do it. It If you go to project my screen in settings. Project my it, screen, the, I see. Okay, so yeah, does the, it say the, mirror cast? It's just the... That's, yeah, that's, that's actually, how they're doing it. Ironically, the word Miracast doesn't appear anywhere in Windows. but No, or in Android uh, either. Right. It's, um, yeah. right, right, right. That's right. That's right. It works similarly in, uh, okay. in Android. Now, we did this in, in Spain with a variety of devices as well, you may recall. Um, the chipsets in those devices aren't so great, and there was a lot of reliability issues. Microsoft is using a new, I think it's a Realtek chipset, brand new. Uh, and in my experience so far, it's been rock solid. So that's it's worked really well. So I just on my, I'm looking on my uh, this mo the Droid Turbo, but I think this is pretty stock Android. It's in mm -hmm. the display settings. It says cast screen. That's what they're talking about. Yep. Yep. No mirror, yep. just cast. Thank you. That was a little mirror cast tutorial. <laughs> sort of. Yeah. But a reason but, to get the Roku, I think. You're right. Well, yeah, because you know a Microsoft device is going to cost a hundred bucks or in the hundred dollar range. You could buy a Netgear or whatever third party device for hundred dollars or whatever. It's just built in a Roku. It's just another thing you right. get. It's it's really neat. You have to have a new one, like a, a three or a, a streaming stick. But it's just like another feature. It's yet another reason, you know, just to have it sitting around. And now your software pick of the week. I know. I see now your chagrin when I launch the show. Go ahead. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I said <laughs> your chagrin because I was saying how nobody on Mac Break Weekly liked Outlook for the Mac, but they don't use right. Outlook. Which is – and – Ironically, I don't use a Mac. So obviously, <laughs> <laughs> no, I just thought this was interesting because as Mary Jo knows, we've been talking about this for months and months. What's going on with the Office for the Mac? What's going on with the Office right. for the Mac? What's right. going on with the Office for the Mac? I think those guys finally heard the complaining. And uh, they released an interim update of Outlook for Mac. And so if you have Outlook 2011, which is the latest version of the Mac Office, um, I'm trying to remember if there's a requirement for this. I think you actually need, do need to have Office 365 to get this. Um, but you can get Outlook for Mac, uh, the, a new version of Outlook for Mac. Now, I don't use this a lot. I've heard based on the feedback I've received, I did install it. I did attach accounts to it. I did check it out. It's actually not like a super sophisticated next generation Exchange Active Slink slash MDM awesome client. It, it is basically the old Outlook client for Mac spit shine to look like OneNote for Mac, which is the visual style they're going to use in the next version of Office for Mac, which is coming out next year. And so in early 2015, there'll be a preview version, I think in the second half of 2015, uh, the final, you know, public version of Office, whatever they call it, Office, let's call it Office 2015 for Mac or whatever, will come out. But this version of Outlook and the, the version of uh, OneNote, which is free for Mac, have that ribbon-based UI that we're going to see across all the Office apps in the next version. It's really pretty. Uh, and it's a nice looking app. I, by the way, I think Outlook, I hate Outlook. I, I actually, I hate Outlook. I very specifically use web-based clients myself on PCs and I would on a Mac as well, but, um, but not everyone works like I do. And so I sort of, uh, acknowledge that at least, but, um, I'm, Microsoft just released a new application for the Mac. That's all, you know, it's pretty. Hey, it's, it's free. If you got office 365, get it. Right. Now, and more important, they answer the questions we had. Yeah, and we and we get a sense of what uh, the next version of Office will look like on the Mac as well. Yeah, and it, it looks good in yeah. my mind. Yeah, uh, Mary Jo Foley, time for you and your enterprise pick of the week. Yes, my enterprise pick of the week. Um, it's a very complicated thing that I'm going to try to explain simply. It's a licensing thing. Oh. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, right now, if you license Windows 7 or Windows 8 um, as an enterprise user, you license it per device. But Microsoft is making a really big change to their licensing come December 1st. They're going to start allowing enterprise users to license Windows 7 Pro and Windows 8 Pro by user instead of by device. And the reason this is huge is this is really a step along the path that we've been talking about in terms of how Microsoft's going to turn Windows into more of a subscription play. Now, we knew, we knew they weren't going to do it exactly like they did it with Office 365, but this is kind of the glimpse or, or a start to how they're going to do it. Um, there's, a, there's so many different permutations and combinations of this that I'm not going to go into detail. I have a whole blog post with resource links. Um, this is so complicated, like there are whole webinars about this <laughs> licensing change. <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding. Um, but 
in the end, we think, because Microsoft hasn't really talked a whole lot about this, that it's going to be simpler and cheaper for customers who have multiple devices and who also have um, cross-platform devices. So if you have iOS, Android, and Windows, you're going to be able to bring all of these things together under this new per-user license. And in theory, at least, it's going to make your, your licensing headaches a little less painful. So go go check out. I have a ton of resources on my site. Um, you look up for you can look up things around this new bundle they have called the Enterprise Cloud Suite, uh, where you're going to be able to actually have a Windows Seven or Windows Eight enterprise license uh, on a per user basis, plus Office three sixty five, plus the new Microsoft Enterprise Mobility Suite, all in one package. That's that's another very interesting bundle that a lot of enterprise users are going to want. So that's that's my pick of the week. Me too. And now it's it's one of those things that sounds like, oh, who cares? But when when I when I wrote about this this week, so many people were like, oh man, if this actually pans out, this is gonna be the end of my headaches on licensing, or at yeah, least a, yeah. a lot of my headaches. The article is at uh, all about Microsoft .com. About Microsoft. I wanna yep. read it. <laughs> Mary Joe has written it, so you should read it. <laughs> Uh, and your pick, or I'm sorry, code name of the week. Code name of the week. Since we talked a lot about the Microsoft Fitness Band, um, I, that is my code name of the week. That that was code named Project K. Interestingly, oh, interesting. Um, and the reason that's very interesting. Two two reasons to me that's interesting. One is it's not the only Project K code name that Microsoft has. In fact, the next version of ASP.NET, which isn't out yet, is also code named Project K. Mm. Uh, so they are reusing the code name or two different teams both decided to use K for their various reasons. Or special the, K, one special yeah, K. Yeah, special K, right. It must be about that. I don't know. I actually don't know why they, they use the letter, but I do know that the team that built the fitness band is using letters as code names. And the other one I know that they have in the works is called Project B. And that <laughs> supposedly is a gaming helmet. Oh. Um I don't know any any details about it. Gaming There's been a pat helmet. sighting, you know, uh, kind of along the lines of Oculus Rift, I think. Yeah. Um, but not exactly like that. Something that you would wear using the Xbox, I would think. Um, maybe only the Xbox. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, they're using they're using letter code names, so we know K and we know B. I don't know any of the other code names from that group, which is I think known as the analog team inside of the devices group. Uh, so if anyone has any other letter code names they know, pass them along. We'll take them. Special K. Yeah. Is it snowing where you are? Me? It looks, no. It's, it, has, it has snowed here. <laughs> it looks very dark. It's very dark out here. Yeah, yeah, it is very, very dark. It's like a storm is coming. It, yeah, it snowed here the other day. That was a very unhappy I experience. Saw I pictures. know. I saw yeah. you say that. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> mm. I'm like the crazy person down the street. Like people who live near me, they would see like this guy walk outside and he looks up at the sky and he goes like, oh, dang you, Mother Nature. <laughs> Screw you, Mother Nature. <laughs> yeah. And then takes a picture of it and posts it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this is how we, right. Yeah. It's not real unless I put it on Facebook, Leo. Uh, that's why I follow you. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, it's so important to spell everything correctly. That's why it's time for our beer pick of the week. Luxy Bassard <laughs> Ale. I can't even read this post. It's so crazy. No. What? So the, yeah. The real name of the beer pick is Stone Lucky Bastard. <gasps> but it's not Sorry, spelled that way. <laughs> it's not even the right name. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, this and they misspell it as L U K C Y B A S A R T D. Um, but what it is is a combination of three of their different bastard brand ales: Arrogant Bastard, Oak Arrogant Bastard, and Double Bastard. Wow, I've never gotten to say so many bastards in one podcast. Wow, <laughs> I think it's pronounced bastard, <laughs> which is amazing because you're here with Leo and I. Yes, <laughs> two of the most famous bastards. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, and so the reason they misspell it, if you go on, if you go on the Stone Brewing site. Um, it's kind of like a little joke. It's it's around. We said we'd only brew this once, but we we're actually brewing it multiple times, and it's um, plays on the whole thing around around Stone's arrogant bastard brand, which is this is an aggressive ale. You probably won't like it. It's quite doubtful you have the taste or sophistication to be able to appreciate an ale of this quality and depth. 
that's that's kind of how they talk about their bastards, arrogant bastard and all. What is this so written in Gaelic? I don't. Uh, no, I think it's. Uh, it's Klingon. funny language from. Uh, <laughs> actually, I can. Zoom. This is this is like the thing that was circulating on Facebook for a while, where it shows that you can understand. Uh, language, even if it's horrifically mangled. Yeah. Open your mind. Yeah. Use a crowbar if you must. Since 1997, Argonaut BT Ale has demanded that tyrannical mediocrity relax its grip of opprobrium on our collective yeah, tyrannical consciousness. Tyrannical mediocrity. Yes. <laughs> tyrannical me. Few opprobrium? possess the opprobrium. Fru few. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Few, few pesos, the few pesos, the reclining <laughs> site, our depth of. It's one of those things where if you just kind of don't look at it too hard, you can read it. Yep. You can just That's gloss funny. over it. It's pretty funny. It is. Yeah. It is funny. But if you ever do find this beer, I think I think you will really like it. It's categorized as an American strong ale, which is kind of an amorphous type of beer. Um, a lot of things fall into that category. But it comes in at 8.5%. It's not a light beer, but it's a very, very good beer. The, the combination of all those different bastards really works. <laughs> <laughs> it's from it's from the Stoned Brewing Company. Now I understand. That's what they, that's what they say about this podcast. Yes, Stone Brewing a combination of all those bastards. <laughs> At least it's not hoppy. It's not hoppy. <laughs> not hoppy. It's not hoppy, but it's very very tasty. I'm hoppy Delicious. though. Delicious. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes this portion of the programming day, the famous, world famous Windows Weekly show, famous because. It stars Mr. Paul Therott as the lucky bastard and Mary Jo Foley as his foil. And uh, together they make an amazing show. If you're interested in Microsoft or you know somebody who is, you must tell them about Windows Weekly. We do it every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 1900 UTC if you want to watch live. If not, on-demand audio and video available after the fact at twit.tv slash WW and wherever finer podcasts are pushed up to your appliances. Uh, hey, thanks, guys. Have a great week. Thanks. We'll both be here next week. Yep. All right. Yep. And the week after, <laughs> I'll be in Sweden. We're going to go right. You're going show. away. Yeah, we've got, we've arranged. Yes. Yes. Arranged. We've arranged. So uh, we will see you. Uh, and thank you so much. Thank you, sir. All right. Take care. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next time on Windows Week.